The vast majority of people can carry a tune, even though many believe that they cannot. Singing a familiar song on pitch and in time is an innate human ability. Listening to sung music activates brain regions responsible for singing, even when we don't make a sound. When we listen to vocal music, it automatically activates speech and music domains in the left and right hemispheres. Learning to command attention with our voices begins in infancy with our first cry. Trained singers build up the brain regions responsible for analyzing pitch, for producing pitch with their vocal apparatus, and for manipulating their voices to convey different emotions. This requires a singer to coordinate many muscles. When it comes to singing, musicians have better control of their vocal apparatus than non-musicians, owing to enhanced auditory skills. Trained singers epitomize this level of control. In order to sing, the motor cortex sends commands to the laryngeal muscles supporting the glottis, that's the opening of the larynx where the vocal cords reside, and to abdominal muscles and the diaphragm to control the sound's duration and intensity. It also activates the articulatory muscles of the lips, jaw, and tongue. After deciding on the words or the sounds to produce, next we decide on the appropriate emotion to convey. For managing this, two important nuclei are the anterior cingulate cortex and periaqueductal gray. The anterior cingulate is sensitive to music. You'll learn more about it in the next lesson. The periaqueductal gray's main job is to signal and to modulate pain. It tells the rest of the body to react or not to a painful stimulus. Whether you shout in triumph or silently tolerate stubbing your toe, your anterior cingulate and periaqueductal gray have taken charge. These structures control emotionally generated urges to express ourselves vocally, although some of the time we have voluntary control over it. But as we all know, vocalizations are not always under control. Pain, surprise, excitement, and other emotions can cause automatic vocal reactions. There's a network-like connection of axons and neurons in the brainstem called the reticular formation. It is an evolutionarily ancient structure that initiates a neural pattern that excites the phonatory muscles and causes us to express ourselves with our voice. In this way, singing moves from decision to action, but traveling through emotion regions along the way. This diagram shows what happens when we hear music that we enjoy. First, the auditory system hears and analyzes the instrumentation and style of the music. Whether it's techno, classical, or folk music, the auditory cortex is listening for patterns and sending the signal onward to the rest of the brain. Timing information in the dorsal path lets the motor system take charge of expecting the next beat, or the next measure, or the next section of the song. Frontal regions in the brain will perform some higher level knowledge-based analysis to decide what it thinks and what might be an appropriate response to this particular music in this context. Here is where the brain may conclude that it likes this music well enough to memorize it, download it, or add it to a playlist. Sometimes it's best to sit still and listen. Other times it's fine to move or sing. Regardless of what you do outwardly, if you like the music, then brain regions that correspond to singing, dancing, moshing, conducting, performing, or any musical behavior will receive a trickle of nervous system activation as you listen. This activity engages the dopaminergic reward system, which we will see in the next video.